Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of StreetWave uh, webinars. Today we will be addressing a uh, new product line for StreetWave called CradlePoint. Um, we're very pleased to have some good guests with us today to go through CradlePoint technologies. CradlePoint is a 3G, 4G networking solution um, which allows you to take in a cellular 3G or 4G signal and put it out through Wi-Fi, which allows you to do all sorts of solutions. Um, these solutions expand into remote locations, mobile locations, fixed locations, and will give you a lot of flexibility in the things that you do. These Wi-Fi uh, solutions brought to you through cellular allow you to use backup options as well as do failover, which means that if something happens and you're not able to use your regular connection, you can use this connection as a means to get your signal out, uh, to get your internet, your broadband, and whatever you need for your clients. Um, I'm very pleased to introduce our guests today. Um, we have uh, three guests in the audience, and our first guest will be our presenter. His name is Paul Eggert. Paul is the Business Development Director for CradlePoint, and he's responsible for working with CradlePoint's reseller programs and with its partners, as well as uh, discussing the sales options and flexible issues and solutions for CradlePoint. Paul has over 20 years' experience in the business, having worked at places such as Hewlett Packard, Enterprise Servers and Extended Systems. He's worked in the VAR channel for a long time and typically understands the types of solutions that are needed in the industry. With him, we have Michael Pickens, or Dickens, excuse me, who is the systems and sales engineer at CradlePoint, um, and Mr. Mike Adamson in the background there to answer some questions as we go. Let me tell you just briefly a little bit about StreetWave, and then I'm going to turn this over to Paul so that you can um, understand about CradlePoint. StreetWave is a, a full-service, value-added uh, distributor. We serve uh, the United States and the globe. We provide for reseller systems integrators, bars, and the entire channel. Our focus is on wireless and wired broadband and internet solutions, and uh, we're here to help you with the types of products and solutions that you might need to do just about any project or sell into just about any marketplace. If we can be of any assistance, we ask you to give us a call or come on board uh, to our website at streetwave.com. It's now my great pleasure to turn over the helm here to Paul Eggert and let him tell you a little bit about CradlePoint and then go through the CradlePoint solutions. Welcome, Paul. Thanks, Richard. Am I, am I coming through okay? I can hear you just fine. Go ahead. Fantastic. And thank you all for joining. We're, we're very, very excited about working with you all. And as Richard said, my name is Paul Eggert, Director of Business Development. And what, what that title means is when you don't know who to call at CradlePoint, call me. I'll help you out or get you to the right place. And also, as Richard said, I have Michael Dickens, one of our systems engineers on the line, to answer the hard questions. Michael, you wanted to say a quick hi to uh, let everybody associate your voice? Good morning, everyone. Oh, all right. Mute issues. Hi. And Mike Adamson. Um, Mike actually manages our inside sales team. Um, they're going to be a great resource working with uh, StreetWave, uh, your StreetWave reps, to uh, get you exactly what you need to uh, make sure we're pulling in the right cradle point resources as needed. Hello. Great. Thanks, Mike. So, folks, my goal for today is to really get you thinking about cradle point. Uh, where can our products fit into your solution set and, and how to recognize new opportunities? Um, as Richard said, our, our offerings sit at the intersection of the cellular and wired network world. It's really an exciting place to be these days. And what I'll do is drill into some of the customer problems we can work on and solve together. Now, I know this is a very diverse audience, so I, I do want to put this out. Please don't take the examples that I give as all we do. It's really just a jumping off point. I know you'll all come up with lots of other interesting areas that we can attack, and, and we're excited about doing that. Uh, I also want to mention real quick that in the time we have today, this is going to be a very high-level overview. Um, I very much welcome the opportunity to dive deeper in a follow-up conversation and, and really talk about your specific markets and needs. And I also want to offer up a more in-depth set of training uh, that we're certainly happy to do. So specifically today, what I'll talk about are the target markets and, and the market drivers, why this is a hot place to be, how CradlePoint products and services really 
fit into those markets and, and serve those customer needs. Finally, I'll give you a few points on things that you need to be thinking about when you have conversations with new customers and prospects, and how to engage Cradle Point as well for uh, technical and sales support. Okay, so let's dive in. Uh, what I'd like Paul, to do is before just we begin, I Paul, I'm going to interrupt you for one second because I did yeah. forget to tell the audience one thing that I do want to make sure everybody understands. This is a little bit of an interactive session in that uh, we will take your Q and A digitally. Um, so if you have questions throughout this session, please type them into the question section in your panel. And uh, we're not going to turn on the microphones, but we will take a Q&A and we will have answered questions throughout the session and at the end with a Q&A as well. Sorry to interrupt you, but I just wanted to Oh, fantastic. It. Yeah, thanks, Richard. I, I definitely want to you know, get the, the pulse of the audience and make sure we're answering all the questions. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes on, on who we are, what we do, and why the market for 3G, 4G routing is, is really taking off and an exciting place to be. So here we go. Um, in a nutshell, what Cradle Point does is we design, manufacture, and sell, and we sell through our reseller network, bridging and routing solutions that link the cellular and wire network. And I, I should also mention, and I know that there's a lot of WIP folks on the call, Wi-Fi is obviously a big piece of that puzzle, and, and we'll look at that. So we really play in three very broad buckets. Uh, we provide failover for business continuity. So when the wired network goes down, we will seamlessly switch to the cellular network. And by the way, when it comes back up, switch back, which is, is very important given, given the uh, dynamics of the, the data plans that are available. Um, so, for example, you are a, um, uh, a retail store. By the way, that's some low-hanging fruit for us all, distributed enterprise point of sale. Very, very easy to cost justify. You don't want your cash registers down, uh, especially when your cash registers are also your loyalty program, your inventory system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that we'll see in a second. Second big bucket is primary connect for cutting the cord when it's inconvenient or impossible to have a wired connection. Examples would be pop-up stores, uh, getting things up and running very, very quickly before landlines can get there, remote locations, stores within a store, mobile applications, uh, very prevalent in, in this space. And then finally, machine to machine. Um, and it's a pretty varied definition as to what that means. You ask 10 people, you get 10 answers. But in general, think of kiosks, digital signage, security cameras, telemetrics, transportation applications. And as you can see to the right, there are some examples of, of companies where we're um, deploying and installed today. So, you know, why are we winning with these major companies? You know, Cradle Point is a relatively young and nimble company. It's all we do. This is what we do, and we're very focused at it. We're very good at it. But at the same time, we're not that young. We're tried. We're true. We're tested. We're a little bit scarred in, in a very good way. For example, we have 600,000 routers deployed. We have 600 bars and systems integrators working with us, and we, we hope you'll join that number. Um, we were the first to market with LTE and WiMAX routers. We have 32 patents pending or issued so far. One of the things that sets us apart is a deep engineering knowledge base and a relationship with both the carriers, the modem manufacturers that provide the cellular connectivity, and the wired network infrastructure vendors. When things change, and they always do change, we can react quickly, keep the customer up and running. Just a couple other quick points on, on why we're winning. We have significant OEM relationships, names that you'd recognize, but we can't actually say that you know, do give us that deep, deep penetration into the network infrastructure. We have certified solutions on all of the major cellular carriers, but we're carrier agnostic. So we can fit into the environment that's best for the customer. Okay, so why now? What's going on? You know, as you know, we live in a very mobile, always on, always connected world. The expectation of the customer, of your employees, really everyone, is that they have access all the time. Another complementary driver is applications are moving into the cloud. With those applications moving into the cloud, your customer satisfaction, your ability to produce revenue also moves into the cloud. And, and this is for very good reason. 
cloud-based applications are more cost-effective. You can secure them more effectively. They're more flexible. They're much more manageable for all of the reasons listed on, on the slide. So your business can't afford to be down. Your customers expect you to be up and running. And the, dri the cost of drivers demand that you're able to access these applications all the time. So, so what kind of things are we talking about specifically? Here's just a few examples of things that, that just didn't exist a few years ago, or certainly you didn't expect to have them available all the time. And, and notice some of these applications are very high bandwidth applications, video surveillance, for example. Um, and you know, as you look through this, note that these are uh, a bit centric on distributed enterprise retail, one of our big first markets. But again, think about it as food for thought. Think about your environment. Think about all of the different applications that really always need to be on and always connected. All right, so the market is driving this always on fast, high bandwidth connectivity. And the planets are aligning as the technology to support these high bandwidth applications has arrived. I'm sure everybody on the phone has, has heard of and has been bombarded with all of the information on 4G. 4G delivers the speed that will support the applications we just looked at. Uh, a lot of information on this slide, but look down to the lower right. Cable modem delivering a 10 megabyte file in 16 seconds, LTE on Verizon's network in five. Your results may vary. Of course, there's lots and lots of variables here, but it just gives you an example that the speed of 4G, and specifically 4G LTE, is ready for prime time. You can run your networks on it. The other key point here is that the standards are coalescing around LTE. All of the carriers are moving to LTE technology. That means there's less uncertainty in the market. Companies are ready to make decisions and they're ready to deploy because the risk of the standards changing has gone down dramatically. All right, let's just take a little bit closer look at some of the applications and some of the opportunities. Here are some of the markets where we've historically played very, very well together. We've already talked a little bit about retail, distributed enterprise, machine to machine, some mobile applications like vehicles, delivery vehicles, lighting up a train to allow their customers to have Wi-Fi access, but in addition, running their electronic ticketing systems, their video surveillance cameras, et cetera, et cetera. Temporary locations like construction trailers in remote areas, or disaster recovery command centers, home health care monitoring, and the list goes on and on and on. I really can't wait to hear from you all because every time I do a presentation like this, there's a few more interesting ones that come up, and I'm very excited about talking to you all about those. Okay, so the market's there, the technology's there. Let's take a quick look at the products that CradlePoint brings to market that addresses these uh, market needs. So I'm going to point out a few ways we, we segment our product line. First notice, um, along the rows, we have products with integrated modems. The cellular modem is built into the product. And we have products with external modems or external modem ports where we, you would use a USB or express card modem from the carriers to get your network access. It's not that one is better than the other. They're, they're just designed for different needs and provide different, uh, different features and functionality. And then along the columns, you'll see that we have smaller, more compact, more robust products uh, from a environmental standpoint to work in the machine-to-machine -machine environment. And then on the left, for distributed enterprise and other markets, we have a, a bit more robust set of products. And by robust, I, I, I don't mean we're you know, feature-rich necessarily. It's apples and oranges. They both have features for the market they were designed for. But the distributed enterprise products would have more connectivity options, more ports, et cetera. I also want to point out that the cradle point um, uh, strategy is not just to deliver hardware 
We also provide services in um, the way of professional services, enterprise support agreements, and warranty enhanced services, and also Wi-Fi Central. These services are sold on a license basis that would provide a recurring revenue stream for our partners, and we're, we're very excited to be a total solutions company. The one thing I do want to dig down on a little bit more is Y Pipe Central. It really is one of the key components, one of the secret sauces that, that sets Cradle Point apart. Y Pipe is a cloud-based management utility, and it allows you to monitor, control, configure, and update products in the field in groups. Now you could you could log into any particular router out there uh, remotely and do all of those things. But when you have thousands of them potentially deployed, you want to be able to do that in bulk, overnight, without, um, without a lot of manual intervention. For example, if you want to upgrade the firmware, you want to be able to do that without logging into each device or without rolling a, rolling a truck. Again, a monthly recurring license fee, very reasonable, very cost effective, very cost justifiable but um, one that will provide our resellers with a very nice recurring revenue stream. Okay, to kind of tie all that together, I wanted to just show you this one case study that, that illustrates several interesting uh, things. First of all, there are absolute hard and real dollar savings involved here. It, it becomes very easy to cost justify our solutions when you're talking about $50,000 in expenses that are avoided on a couple of hundred dollar product and a couple of thousand dollars worth of data services, perhaps. Um, so this particular example, Pandora Jewelry with 500 stores and $7 billion in revenue, had a problem. They couldn't get some new stores up and running due to an ISP strike. We were able to come in with a Cradle Point product, become a primary connect solution to get them over the hump, avoid the uh, penalties that they would have been charged for not opening on time, and get them ready for the holiday season. The 450 router stays in that environment and acts as the backup or failover business continuity solution on an ongoing basis. So I think that ties together several different examples of, of what we do and how we do it and why it's important right now. So Richard, I, I think now might be a good time to pause before I drill a little bit deeper. If, if there are one or two questions that, that seem appropriate now, I'd be happy to take them, and we can certainly uh, have the bulk of our Q&A at the end uh, as planned. Sure. A um, couple of questions that have come up. We do have some, uh, we have a very diverse audience base today, but we do have some wireless internet service providers on the line who are um, anxious to find out how this solution can be applied in their business. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the failover solutions and other solutions that you think will be applicable to WISPs? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to a slide that specifically talks to that in a few moments, but just to whet your appetite, what we're thinking, um, and this is a little bit of a new space for us, and we're excited about working with you and rolling up our sleeves with the engineering teams. Certainly, um, as a failover option, if um, your uh, hardwired lines to your towers go down, be able to do some diagnostic and, and, and perhaps rebooting or analyzing what's going on in your equipment closet is, is a possibility. Um, also, the opportunity to offer failover to your business customers, um, as, as we do with a standard wired network, I think would be very, very appropriate. We also think that there might be an opportunity to be able to provide a very limited level of service, you know, perhaps putting a message out that says, yes, we know we're down, you don't need to call our support center right now, we're working on it, and the ETA is X. Uh, or being able to provide some limited continuity, I think, might also work with, with some of our products. Again, stuff for us to test and work, uh, work out the specifics together. Great. And there are quite a few solutions that, that can be crafted with um, WISPs, and we'll go into detail about some of those as well. Um, one of the other things that keeps coming up is um, how consistent is the signal that comes across Cradle Point? Can they use it as a persistent connection if they want to, or is it only seen as a failover? No, absolutely. Um, we can act as a primary connect. Um, the, the cellular networks are 
very robust and very stable um, and, and would absolutely be able to support um, a, a, a very mission critical network in a primary connect fashion. Michael, do you, do you have a comment or two there as well? Michael, you with us? In more detail. Ah, there you are. You just came. You just came on. We couldn't quite hear you. Can you repeat? Uh, yeah. In a in a larger solution base. Uh, let's go through your slides, and then I'm gonna do a little bit bigger at the end for everyone. All right. Fantastic. We'll 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 come back to that one and talk a little bit more about the robustness of the carrier network. One one last question, then we'll go back on with the presentation as a follow on to the last question is. On the failover applications, uh, do the failovers happen automatically, or do they require some intervention? No, great question. It is absolutely completely automatic. You would configure um, the the various failover scenarios, and then it will auto sense, auto failover, and auto fail back. Great. Why don't we turn back to the slides, and we'll come back for right. some more Q and A. Great. So what I want to do now is drill down a little bit into one of the, one of the areas we highlighted: failover. That is that is probably the easiest to go after initially. Um, you know, as we talked about, the applications are in the cloud. You know, let's say you're Macy's. Um, you don't want your point of sale systems going down. That costs you money. It costs you money fast. You're Merrill Lynch. You want to be able to have your quotation systems up and running all the time. You're Coinstar from a kiosk perspective. Really important to know how many pennies people put into the big green box at the supermarket and, and know when it's full and know when empty it. You know, we, we provide that connectivity. So what, what happens when that wired connection goes down? You know, again, you, you've lost your customer satisfaction. You've lost your ability to maintain your business model. It has significant costs on an ongoing, ongoing basis. And, and, and companies know that and have known that for a long time. So traditionally, they've backed up their network. They backed up their networks, though, with dial-up connections. And, and I don't think we, we, we all quite remember what dial-up is, but you know, remember AOL, you've got mail, and, and how slow it was? Uh, that's really what we're talking about. And, and that is just not acceptable for the applications uh, today. Um, and, and we need an alternative uh, solution. You know, just one more example of, of the potential cost here. Credit card processing fees, which everybody complains about at 2 or 3%, go up to 30% if you're offline and, and need to save that information and process it later because the credit card company has much more risk. Those, those fees, just that one thing alone, add up so very quickly that it justifies these kinds of uh, alternative solutions that we'll talk about in a second. So A, dial up. Of not enough bandwidth. Some folks are moving to DSL or cable backup, and, and that's great. But again, does it provide the, the most cost-effective backup solution? And also, will it be up and running? Because often those phone or secondary DSL lines are buried in the same trench. When the back code takes it out, they're going to take out both of them. So the alternative that we're talking about is a 4G LTE backup. It gives you affordable wireless with plenty of bandwidth that's truly redundant, not in the, the same trench. And, and that's really what, uh, what we bring to the table, what we offer. Now, an editorial note, 3G connectivity is fine for lots of applications. There are kiosk applications, you know, many, 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 many environments that we're in today where 3G does the trick you know, perfectly. The data requirements just aren't that great. And, and I just want to remind you, we do that too. We were the first to do that. We still do that. We have products that are 3G only. We have products that are both 3G and 4G. So you can move back and forth depending on the environment that you're in. So we provide the capability to uh, allow your customers to be up and running all the time, increase customer satisfaction, reduce some of the costs that we talked about, and, and really um, provide the total solution. All right, so what I'm going to do now is let me take a look at how it looks in, in some of these typical environments. So what we have here is a situation where a Cradle Point MBR 1400, one of our higher-end routers, is being dropped into a physical location to provide 
the routing solution. So we are the only router. We take the signal off the DSL modem. By the way, we, I'll talk about it more in a second, but we also have a feature called Wi-Fi to WAN. And since there are so many WISPs on the phone, we can take a Wi-Fi signal in and then rebroadcast it out and allow folks to take advantage of some of the extra features that are in the cradle point routers, the security features, load balancing, uh, WAN affinity, all things we'll talk about a little bit or, or go into it in a deeper training. But essentially what we're doing here is we're providing the total routing solution to the various systems within a, a location. And then um, if something um, goes awry with the wireline, we're failing over to the 3G connection. In this scenario, an alternate primary network, there are certain situations where you might need to isolate certain traffic, a store within a store, a kiosk, a, a vendor coming into the store for a variety of reasons. Again, a little beyond the scope of this training, but we certainly could, could answer questions about it or go deeper. But there, there's often the need that we see for an alternate network, and we, we exist in that environment as well. Another is a overlay failover application. Now, this is where you have an existing network infrastructure, a Cisco Juniper router that's running off of the DSL connection or T1 or T3, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're providing is seamless failover and backup for that hardwired connection. We're able to, without any changes to the firewall configurations um, and, and some of the deeper uh, settings on the Cisco router, we're able to sense an outage and fail over to the cellular network and keep that existing network up and running without a lot of changes to that environment. All those changes cost time and, and money and energy and qualifying. OK, and this is uh, the other one that we had, had addressed in the Q&A, and we are bouncing around, and we'd love to explore uh, with you. So you know, there's equipment rooms. There's obviously a primary connection seems to us very similar to these corporate data centers and environments where if that primary connection goes down, can we talk to the equipment? Can we get an alternate network up and running via the cell towers to do equipment diagnostics? And again, we need to learn a little bit more about the bandwidth requirements, et cetera, but it seems like you might be able to provide some limited connectivity depending on how many users that tower serves, um, certainly status messaging, et cetera. So we're, we're very excited about this potential. It, it's one of those aha moments where, hey, here's something new, here's something different. Let's, uh, let's explore a little bit more. All right. And then finally, um, I want to mention the standalone connectivity. So certainly, this is all the M2M applications, ATMs, digital signage, kiosks, et cetera, uh, the security cameras that we had mentioned but also mobile applications would, would fit into uh, this kind of environment where you, know, you have something in the truck, we're moving around, and it's a primary connection to the network, and um, we provide uh, that service in a very robust way. All right, looks like we're doing really good on time. That's, that's fantastic. So um, let me go through a couple of, of more detailed slides on a couple of the products. Now, I'm certainly not going to go into all of this information. Again, the topic for a deeper training that I would I would welcome doing with you all. Uh, but I do want to touch on a, on a few things. Um, this is the ARC MBR 1400. And I um, will point out the ARC stands for a, a group of products, a, a group of product lines. It's the products that have our modem cap. And I'll explain what that means in a second. But the 1400 is, is our uh, most robust router. It has the ability to connect 128 users in a Wi-Fi scenario with a 750 feet range. We have five Ethernet connections that are configurable, so they can be LAN out or WAN in. So you could have multiple T1s, for example, coming into, into the unit. Uh, if you take a close look, you see that we support multiple air cards and multiple USB modems. We can support 20 VPN sessions, um, et cetera. So this is a, a full-featured, very robust uh, product. And, and then you can also see on the lower left, there are several different flavors. 
the base unit would use the external USB modem. And then we have embedded modems in the modem caps, which are snap-on units. They're business-grade modems integrated specifically to work with our products that are going to provide enhanced performance. So that's the, the MBR1400, and, and again, we could go on and on and on on the, on the feature set. I'm going to stop there, and, and if we have time, we'll come back and, and drill down into a little bit more detail on some of the more advanced things that we can do. The ARC CBA750 is a bridging product. So this will provide the capability to take the cellular signal in and then put it out either via ether onto an Ethernet network. The scenario is often into one of the existing routers, say a Cisco that's already on site. Um, you'll notice no Wi-Fi um, output, and that is by design. Um, for PCI compliance, um, which, which by the way is the credit card industry standard compliances um, process, uh, but they, in some situations, depending on the sensitivity of the data, require that not only can you turn off Wi-Fi, but it's not even there. And we provide that capability. This particular unit also has power over Ethernet. So if your existing router is in one place, but your best cell phone signal is in a different place, we can, we can mount the, the, the 750 in a place where you can get the best cell signal and then run the Ethernet back to the router. All right, now let's take a look at some of the embedded modem products. Cradle Point Core. Core, again, is, is the nomenclature, our nomenclature for a, a product family. Core, as you can see, is more compact. It's a bit more ruggedized. It, it's really designed uh, ground up for that M2M -M world, although we do see some bleed over. Uh, there, there are definitely crossover applications. Like our other products, it, it has many of the features we've already talked about. Uh, uh, also incorporates load balancing, um, has multiple versions to support different carriers. Uh, you can see there the E version uh, is an EVDO Sprint. We have EVDO Verizon. The LE version would be both LTE, which is the 4G, and E, EVDO. Um, gets a bit, bit technical, but you can see we have a very wide range and diverse product lines that support whatever the, the right product is for the customer in their particular environment. Also notice the external antenna ports here. You know, other products have external antenna ports, but that's just another very important feature to have. If you're in a wiring closet, that's often not the best place for signal. All right, and one more product uh, that we'll highlight here. We have the CVR 400 and 450. By the way, the 50s all stand for no Wi-Fi. Um, so these would be the no Wi-Fi version for PCI or HIPAA compliance. Again, compact, M2M design. The 400 and 450 are the, the external modem products that give you that flexibility of plugging in you know, one of over 300 different uh, modem types. All right. And here's the eye chart. If, if you can read it, you get the prize. Um, I really just wanted to throw this up and point it out. This is the one piece that, that I would print out if I were you. There's links on the bottom of the slide to where you can get the PDFs. There's one version for the embedded modem products, one version for the non-embedded modem products. And this really just gives you a great summary of the feature sets, including management and security, Wi-Fi, et cetera, how many ports. Um, what the ranges are, you know, those basic, basic questions along with the ever important MSRP pricing. All right, Richard, I think we're doing real well on time. Maybe another good place to pause for a question or two, and then I'll go through uh, some of the sales conversation and sales support uh, functionality that we have, and um, we can then jump into more questions as needed. Sure. Um, great show so far. We have quite a few questions. Uh, one of the questions, a couple of questions, the theme centers around what options do I have in terms of the carriers that we can use? Um, can I use multiple carriers or do I have to use a single one? Which ones, how do I choose what carrier from the cellular side um, to use? And then secondly is whether or not the carriers are available both um, in the United States and abroad in uh, international 
Yeah, so I'll take a first hit at that, and then Mike and, and Michael, if you want to jump in, that's, that's great to add a little flavor. So first of all, we support all of the major carriers. We have very deep relationships with all of the major carriers. Where appropriate, our products are certified on all of those carriers, ATC, Sprint, Verizon, Clear, et cetera. And almost as importantly, our modems, uh, because each carrier uses various modems, our modems are tested and supported, and you can get a full listing of all of those modems that are supported on our website. Again, well over 300 of them um, that we support, by far the, the, widest, the widest range. Um, the other question is, can you use multiple carriers? So the answer to that is yes, and, and they can keep me honest here, but you can have Sprint um, USB plugged into one port of the 1400 and a Verizon USB modem plugged into another port and have failover between the carriers. So if one carrier went down but the other carrier's power was up, you could fail right over to it. That's, uh, that's very good. It was... yep. Go ahead, Mike. Yep, you can also do load balancing across the carriers and also load balancing and failover with any wired WAN as well. Yep, fantastic. Thanks. So, well, and, and let me just mention also real quick, um, Richard, that StreakWave has the ability to help you with activation. So not only could you go to the carrier for it, but there are lots of good reasons why you might want to go to StreakWave and, and have a conversation on on the specifics of activation because in, in, in a lot of these environments you might need a pooled data plan or specific business to business plans that the stores aren't always the best to, to, to talk about. You know, I, I would very much recommend that you go to your street wave rep to talk about activation options. Right, and there are um, flexibilities in the activation options as well, um, as well as the different companies. And Streetway can help you with the activations in such companies as Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, and others. So if you do have questions about that, do contact your um, Streetway representative and be happy to help you with that. One other related question to that that's come up a couple of times is, and it goes to the flexibility of the activations, is are there plans that are more suitable for failover so that I don't have to pay an awful lot all the time for, for uh, this connection. But if I need it and when I use it, it's there and then I pay for that data. Maybe you can explain how the plans work with failover. Yeah, I really, the answer is yes, very much so. There are specific plans that the carriers sell for machine-to-machine -machine environments or that are more appropriate in business-to-business -business and failover scenarios. Now, since Cradle Point doesn't resell the plans, again, we're carrier agnostic. I, I hesitate to go into any any specifics, other you know, because I'll just get myself into trouble. Other than to say that yes, yes, and yes, and certainly um, there are ways to avoid very expensive bills um, by surprise, and that's something that we do um, that we do get involved with within our routers. There's alerting and reporting and actually capabilities to shut off the router if one gets out of control <laughs> or a user decides to watch high def movies uh, with their particular router. So, so that is absolutely someplace where we get involved and, and as I mentioned there are things like pooled plans. So let's say you have a hundred of these things out there and each one has 10 megabytes of, of data but really, statistically, only you know two or three of them will go down. And, and by the way, when I say that, it's not the cradle point that, that is ever you know very rarely going down. We have a 0.05 percent hardware failure rate. When I say going down, I mean your network is going down. You know, two or three out of a hundred may go down. But if you have a pooled plan, you're never going to go over because you're just sucking up the data from the other ones that didn't go down. So and, and I want to. Do you want to jump in on anything there as well? Did I, I miss anything critical? Michael, did we lose you? Nope, not at all. Um, no, that's good. Pooling is a very key way of keeping track of all your data, so you're not paying as much for each individual site, but then you only use it as you're needed per month. And the carriers are usually pretty flexible about adding data as you know, perceive that you're going to need that data so that you don't use overages. Okay, thank you. So for those of you that may be using it as a network backup or, or as a failover, 
there are options available to choose for different ways to do this. And, and that's one of the things StreetWave can help you with is configuring the system to best meet and best suit your backup needs. Uh, for a WISP that's trying to back up a network or trying to make sure that they can remotely access radios or equipment in the field, that may be one plan. For someone who's using it, <clears throat> excuse me, not as a failover solution, but for example, we have one um, listener today who made a comment that he's using an MBR 1200, used it for over a year with a 3G connection to do a construction site um, IP network camera um, and had tremendous success with that. So uh, that, that type of application may use more data and so may require a different kind of plan, but you can also restrict or limit the amount of data that's coming from a particular device so that you don't overplay your, your um, network. Um, one question, and it, it comes up frequently on that subject, is obviously that the carriers are adding in um, caps on their on their network flow these days. What do you do about those caps? Can you aggregate lines, or how, how do you deal with those caps? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Michael give you the technical answer. We 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 basically are at the mercy of the carrier plan, you know. So there's nothing we can do about specifically how they set things up. But there are ways to, to mitigate. Again, there are quite a variety of plans that the various carriers can bring to the table. Uh, and they all are in competition with each other to, to get, um, get customers. Because remember, when they get a customer, they usually get a customer for a very long time, you know, certainly 24 months, which is what a consumer would sign up uh, for. But there are, there are definitely costs of switching. And um, you know, once Verizon gets somebody, they usually have them for a while. So they get pretty creative on some of these deals and, and some of these plans. Again, I, I, I you know, don't have any of the specifics. That would be a carrier question. But you know, one of the things that I can say is you know, a couple of things that Michael mentioned, load balancing, WAN affinity, being able to drive certain type of traffic certain ways. Um, for example, if you have multiple cellular modems and multiple WAN inputs, we can direct the traffic um, one way or another to make sure that the most mission critical traffic is getting through if there are any bottlenecks. One thing we can't do is take three modems and make one giant pipe. Um, that, that's not technically feasible, but we certainly can balance among the modems and drive the critical traffic one way or another. Michael, okay. did I um, say that that is correct. It's session-based load balancing. Another thing that I do want to mention about the data and be cautious about that, we can monitor that data and report it all through Wi-Fi Central so you can keep track of each of your site's data usage and then, um, you know, as it gets higher, you can go ahead and control and shut that down or throttle it down with QoS settings. Yep. Um, at and this point, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest that we go through the rest of the slides and then we'll continue with the Q&A. We have a bunch more questions, but I think we should get through Perfect. the rest of the presentation. Perfect. I'll, I'll just answer that final question that you had, the first of your questions. Thank you, Mike, for <laughs> reminding me. International. So yes, with some caveats. We support 70 carriers around the world, and um, there is information on our website about the specifics of that. Uh, there are certain places where we won't, where we may work, but don't have the full certification. So we need to be careful about that. Um, and um, there are certain areas again where we might work, but we haven't ourselves as Cradle Point tested those products. So the answer is yes, but we want to make sure we we check um, before we we deploy. All right, so let's let's move on. So you know what I want to talk about for a few minutes here is the, the, the sales conversation. You know, when you go out and start talking to your customers and prospects about this, one of the cool things that you're going to find is at the highest level, Cradle Point is really simple. Um, it, it's pretty simple value proposition, and it's really simple to set up. Even I can do it, and I'm a sales guy. And no offense, I know there's lots of others of us on the phone. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of pretty plug and play out of the box. It's going to work. Now, the cool thing is there are almost unlimited abilities to customize and, and set the, the cradle point routers and bridges up for your particular environment. 
And, and as you're thinking about that and, and maybe checking out uh, our management console uh, to, to see how flexible we are, you know, and then relate that back to the customer requirement. If you're talking to a customer that wants to implement this kind of solution, these are the kinds of things that they're going to be thinking about. Network segmentation, multiple WANs, PCI compliance, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, again, we don't have the time to go into each of these in depth. Uh, you know, certainly topics for a deeper training. But my message to you is we have you covered across each of these dimensions. And, and our products support all of these different um, customer requirements. You know, one thing I, I will throw out there, and maybe we can talk a little bit more about it if we have time in, in the Q&A, is we do have the ability to build a Wi-Fi hotspot. So uh, you know, again, what we can do in conjunction with some of the WISP equipment or in a, a coffee shop is take the signal in and allow for the flash page, the terms of condition, acceptance, uh, use of third-party services like Radius, et cetera, to allow that additional functionality while at the same time segmenting that public network on its own SSID and allowing the corporate point-of-sale system perhaps to be on a second SSID and with the 1400 perhaps a vendor network of people coming into your store on a third network. So this gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of opportunity to, uh, to customize the unit. Again, we know this is new for a lot of folks. Uh, through your StreakWave rep, we have an inside team that you can access to do joint customer calls. We have a full systems engineering team that um, they can pull in as needed and a field team uh, to work some of the larger deals with you. But these are the kinds of things that you want to just be thinking about before you initiate a conversation. And our website is a good resource to get some basic training on this um, and to get some background on each of these different items. The other thing I want to mention, um, and we've already touched on a few of these through the Q&A, but obviously for our products to work, you're going to need an active data plan. Um, I shouldn't say that. For our product to work as, as expected, you certainly could buy our product and use it as a straight up router, but to, to have all of the uh, functionality and features of our product, you're going to need a data plan. And you're going to need the right data plan, which Streakwave can help you with, and you're going to want to be able to monitor that data plan. Again, we do that. Um, the other thing is uh, these things tend to multiply quickly. Once somebody tests it and does a pilot, they're going to want to roll it out into bigger environments. So that remote management capability through Wi-Fi Central becomes very, very important. Uh, these are going to be mission critical environments in a lot of cases. So getting access to a tech 24-7 is important. We can do that. Um, you want to make sure that uh, any product you're using will integrate with existing network infrastructure like Cisco's or Juniper's that we talked about. You want to make sure that you are able to really seamlessly connect those two worlds and, and you want to be working with somebody that understands both of those worlds. We do that. Um, and then, you know, one objection that's always going to come up is we'll already have backup. It's, it's through that dial-up line or I have a second DSL. And, and being able to talk to some of those objections and why those might not be the most appropriate given the, the way the applications are being run in the cloud uh, is a conversation we um, can help you have with these customers. We do it all day long. All right, one more example. And you know this, this just sort of illustrates to me how pervasive and widespread the need is. So here's one of our customers, Safeway. They have their corporate network um, need failover. But look at all of these other connected devices that we um, enable in the stores. So you have vendors coming into the stores, heart systems doing inventory, um, or waste management uh, companies that need to have access and want to upload their data. All of these different types of kiosks, uh, Coinstar, GTEC, which is the lottery machine, the ATM machine, the Redbox uh, video rental, CradlePoint providing connectivity for, for all of those, health monitoring via the uh, blood pressure units in, in the back of the store, security cameras. So 
it, it's just amazing to me that in this one location with a corporate network, you have all of these other needs and all of these other connectivity requirements that we serve. And again, food for thought. I know that everybody is not serving the distributed enterprise retail point of sale markets, but think about your markets and think about the billions of devices. And that's a quote from uh, one of the uh, industry analysts that are being connected to the network uh, every day. All right, so just a couple of other points. Um, you know, next steps, if you will. We absolutely can work with you to provide uh, deeper sales and technical training, have a conversation about who you sell to and, and what your solutions look like and, and how we can fit into those. Um, and and um, I'll reiterate, the way we want to do this is you go back to your Streakwave rep. The Streakwave rep will pull in the right cradle point resources to, uh, to work with you on the opportunity. We do have a lot of sales and marketing collateral up on our website and, and others that I can get you separately as part of the engagement. We also have a reseller program that provides some additional discounts um, and there's a way to apply for that um, on our website as well. Again, I'd encourage you to have a conversation with your Streetwave rep. They can talk to you a little bit more uh, in depth about that program, who it would be appropriate for, and they could pull us in to answer any questions as well. And then here's some resources for you. We have a very extensive knowledge base, as I mentioned. We have online chat capabilities. If uh, you do have somebody out there with a, a product that needs support, we can open a case uh, if there are any questions. Uh, the email and phone support numbers would be both for pre-sales or to access our post-sales technical support. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a regional sales team, um, and that can be uh, uh, access through the Streetwave folks, and, and here's my contact information for um, anything that uh, doesn't fall above or anything unusual. Off to the right, you'll see two circles on our web page. That's, that's actually not the home page, but one of our product pages. And I wanted to point out two things. Um, there's tabs about midway down the navigation, and the right tab, which a lot of people miss, is support and documentation, and I, I think that's just something that is a great place to look. All kinds of configuration guides, white papers, product manuals, data sheets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, can be found there, and just, just will answer most of your questions. Um, also, in the upper right in the red zone, that is the link to our reseller page where you can request a login, get access to our reseller portal, and also apply to our reseller program. All right, I think that that covers it. You know, as I said, fairly high level, lots and lots of, of detail that we can certainly go into, and um, happy to answer the additional questions. And I think Michael, you were you were uh, working on a, a few things that might be appropriate here, and I'm spacing on the question. <laughs> on the question, I, I, I think it was bad. You know, oh, it was uh, multi-carrier uh, bandwidth kinds of kinds of questions. So if you have some thoughts on that, maybe we can uh, address that while Richard's queuing up um, queuing up some of the other questions for us. Sure, the cover. And of course, the Michael's on mute. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the cover yeah there you go. Now you're off. Thank you. Yeah, the, the question was based on, you know, carriers and choosing coverage and installation. Um, it's always def best to choose the right carrier, and um, coverage and uh, signal-to-noise ratio is very important um, in any installation. Um, physical comes in key very often, um, and a lot of times I like to recommend our CPA 750 as a bridging product and then get that data from the outside of the building all the way internally if we're talking about for a failover. Machine to machine is, uh, you know, putting antennas incorrectly, etc. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into some questions, though, please. Okay, that sounds good. You know, one one other thing I'll mention that that probably just came to mind is signal to noise uh, ratios. Well, how do I know? <laughs> well, one of the things Cradle Point does in, in, in our services is could provide site surveys and professional services around uh, those areas. And one thing I probably didn't highlight quite as much as I should have is you guys can either resell services that Cradle Point can provide and get um, revenue off of that. We could also help you set up your own practices 
in the 3G, 4G cellular arena so that um, you can provide the services and then CradlePoint becomes the tier three backup to your services organization. So, uh, you know, just another area that we can explore and work on together. All right, Richard, what else? I, I want to go through some more of the questions. I want to do a little bit of housekeeping for those uh, people who have been asking a question. It's a very commonly asked question on Streetwave webinars. Uh, how do I get a copy of this? I want to show a copy to uh, my staff or to other people in my company. I would like to forward this. How do I do that? Um, this webinar is recorded, and we will keep a copy of it available on our YouTube channel, which is the youtube.com slash streetwave. And it will also be available on the Streetwave webpage, which is www.streetwave.com. And then if you look at the manufacturers and look at Cradle Point, we call those landing pages for each of the manufacturers. And on that landing page, you'll be able to view this as a video, as a webinar, so you can review it with your staff, watch it right there locally, or watch it on YouTube. Uh, it takes about two or three days for us to get the materials up, because we have to render it and review it. Um, but yes, it will be available for you, so you can review, stop it when you want to, look at the slides. Um, that material will be available. Um, on that subject, I want to move back to some of the questions. I, and if I don't get to your question today, if you have questions that you've posted digitally and I don't get to you, we will get back to you and email you an answer. Uh, I want to make sure that you're, you do get an answer. Some of the questions are, are great questions. They're just a little bit more technical than uh, we can do in this general forum. But uh, you will get an answer, let me just say that. So I want to turn back to some of the questions and talk a little bit uh, more about the product itself. Um, We've gotten a couple questions about whether or not there's some sort of a QoS or quality of service or layering controls on Cradle Point. So let's say you are using it for fail. So how do you stop somebody from beginning to download a Netflix, or is there a way to control any of the downflow? So the answer is yes, but Michael, I, I'll point to you to give a, a little bit more specific. Sure, absolutely. So by default, built in, we do have some QoS settings. Um, they're very controllable. You can define by port, address, incoming, outgoing, uh, that you want to control the bandwidth on, say, prioritization. Um, built in for our hotspot services, you know, if you have guest access, you know, you want, you know, you have corporate Wi-Fi, and then you have your guest access, say, the 1400. You know, you can support four SSIDs. You actually can limit to each user to a very specific amount of bandwidth they can use specifically for the guest access. And then you also can control which bandwidth, if, if you're a load balancing, which WAN interface that's going over. So you can have full control of where your uh, traffic is going. We're also um, implementing a DSDP. So if you're in one of those enterprise networks, you want to prioritize those packets and tag them. That will be an option in the future as well. Great. And are there security, are there uh, methodologies for imploring security as well? Uh, security is always a very important thing. Um, PCI compliance is at the top of our um, heads all the time. We're imp implementing um, continuously to keep on the edge of that PCI compliance. So um, if you're unfamiliar with PCI compliance, it's very for the financial district. So if you're interested in impl implementing uh, security on Wi-Fi, on the access to the router, um, controlling your firewall rules so that, you know, ACL, so you can make sure the traffic going in and out, um, these are all very important key setups. and. Uh, I'd recommend uh, looking at our knowledge base or go ahead and working with us if you're planning on implementing a solution will help you best secure it. Yeah, that, that's actually, you know, while PCI is industry specific, it, it, because that's one of our key initial target markets, it's something we have been very focused on. And there's a great white paper out on our website on PCI compliance. But really, all of those security features and functionality that we built for that translate into general environments and, and keep your network very, very secure over and above uh, what what folks not focused in, in financial and uh, credit card processing type uh, businesses have, have been able to do. Well, guys, um, we are coming up to the top of the hour. We tried to keep these right to an hour, and I know there's been a lot of great questions. And as I said, there may be some questions that didn't get answered, and we'll try and uh, answer those for you. And of course, you can always call your StreetWave representative who has a great knowledge about Cradle Point products. Um, again, this has been a production of uh, StreetWave webinars, and we'd like to thank uh, Paul Eggert, Mike Adamson, and Michael uh, Dickens for giving a presentation today and answering your questions. 
there's a lot more to learn about those guys. So if you have more questions, please give us a call. Come on our website. Um, it's a great solution with a lot of answers. Please join us next time uh, on StreetWave webinars and watch us on YouTube and let us know if there's anything that we can do for you. Um, have a great day and thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>